All right, any amendments to our agenda tonight? Not hearing any, not seeing anyone from the public. So there's, this is a pretty good list of work in progress. Did I miss anything? If not, you can start with the high school gym. Yeah, uh, again, I know we're crunched for time here, so I'll go as quickly as possible through these things. Um, so the, the high school gym, there was concern about, and I think I sent you, gosh, that would be a month or two ago, a preliminary structural assessment of the roof on the gym portion of it. Well, just as we thought it would, it, it doesn't pass today's code. So they suggested that we come up with a snow removal plan. Um, there is no snow removal plan. There's no way for us to get snow off of that roof um, and down to the ground. It is surrounded by, yep, thank you. It is surrounded by other lower roofs, at least 20 feet wide. So there's no way for us to get the snow physically off of the roof. Uh, we can't shovel it, we can't blow it, we can't melt it, we really can't do anything. So the next logical thing would be, um, again, they insinuated after 16 inches, we need to do something. So I think what the next steps would be, uh, would be to get uh, the structural engineers back out there and see if we can't reinforce the web joists that we have currently holding up the roof and see if there's a way that we can maybe make those meet today's codes, make them a little bit stronger by, I'm not quite sure if they'd be able to add structure to it or we'd be talking about replacing them. But uh, to me, it just seems the next logical step here, seeing how we really don't have much of a choice, specifically now that we know uh, that it is an issue and engineers indicated that after 16 inches, we should think about doing something. So I just think it just makes sense to go down that road. Was that something that came up when you talked to them? Because I didn't see that in the report. I mean, I also didn't read it word for word. Yeah, I mean, no. Was it discussed like reinforcing joist? I, I followed up with them and basically spoke to them and said, hey, listen, in, in all practical senses, there is no way I can do snow removal on that roof. There just is not. I can't get a snow blower. I, not that I would be able to snow blower on a roof, but physically, there's no way for us to remove that snow. Like, there's just can't have it. So I said, can we, is it feasible for us to beef up those steel joists that we currently have in there? And they said, yes. Um, what that scope is, I'm not quite sure, but I, I should probably reach out to them and initiate another study and get the money budgeted so that we can make that happen. So from the committee, any questions about that plan is it possible that this would fall into our budget or this is going to i don't think it, uh well they're already asking me to cut yeah. my budget so um it has to happen or we're going to be hanging the sign of a word saying that chips not all yeah. um we've been operating like this for almost 70 years now. Is something going to happen tomorrow? I doubt it. We're generally pretty good about it. If we get a heavy snowstorm and a rain, uh, again, we cover our drains. We do the best we can do. It was a couple times, like I had indicated before, we heard some groaning noises coming out of that actual roof and we shut it down. I mean, I, the thing is now, I think liability-wise, we have no choice. We've been notified by engineers that um, we need to address it. So I, I don't think there's much argument there. Yeah. So it, it certainly makes sense to get a price. That can't hurt. Could we implement a plan such that the gym just doesn't get used if there's more than 16 inches of snow on the roof or something like that? Uh, we certainly could. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we certainly could. I can just say we have. It, it's a terrible plan, though. It, I mean, it is. Like, I will just make it very personal. My kids will no longer be in this school if we don't have a gym. I mean, I just won't be here. I mean, as a parent in this district. District. So, 
I mean, canceling, I mean, basketball is the main sport that happens in winter. So what would you do? Just not have a varsity team, not have games? I mean, it, it would be one of those things where it would be last minute. It all started, we got to cancel because we have snow on the roof. We couldn't do that. It would, we'd be, they, they, I think it was, like, uh, so. Only away games. <laughs> right? Or at least March. Again, I, I, I don't know how quickly I can expedite this, um, but first steps are getting it engineered. So, and I mean, I imagine anytime you bring an engineer to a building that was built in 1956, you're going to find stuff that's not to today's code. The whole building is not to today's code. So yeah, right. So I guess in our, I mean, are there parallel issues around the whole school that would make the same argument that you need to close? Because it, it's not right. code. I mean, I, I guess it, is this um, conclusion that it's unsafe. Is that is that you think that's the right? I mean, is that? I don't think we can ignore it. That's right. that's that's the issue. We've asked engineers to look at it. They've come back and said, yes, you're correct. It, it doesn't meet today's code, but we're we're pretty darn close, but we don't. Our suggestion is over a certain weight, you would need to do snow removal. So, I, I mean, we, we really don't have a choice. I well, I, I agree we don't have a choice in terms of we need to ask them to come back and assess the cost. I'm just asking if we have a choice about operating a gym with more than 16 inches of snow on it. Because when we get big storms, we get big storms. I mean, and we've been again for almost 70 years now. We've had folks in that building with big storms and right. heavy weight on it. <clears throat> I mean, there's not much I, I can really do physically. We can't shove it because if it drops to the lower roof, we're just adding stress to that lower roof. Um, and they suggest that we do not do that. We need to physically remove it. And there is no way to physically remove it. I am surrounded. By that one roof, by other roofs at least 20 or 30 feet wide, there's no way for me to get snow onto the ground. And even if I could, I, I mean, that center of that roof, I'd be launching it 100 plus feet. There's just no feasible way to do it. So that roof has its own drains, correct? It has four drains on, on it, yes. So the drains just go to, they don't go on to the other roofs, they just go. They're piped in and they go out through our storm drains. Now, I also require, gosh, what if I put a bunch of heating tape up there or I ran right. some more flamethrowers or whatever? And they said, do not do that. It'll just add issues. It'll create ice mm -hmm. and it'll tear your membrane. So they said, don't melt it. Don't melt it. No. Hmm. Wow. And is this problem isolated to the gym? Do we have any like roofs over classrooms that are not okay? Not with that type of wet joicy okay. um, that are in this portion of the gym now. Okay. And I think I need to clarify when you guys say it's out of code, I mean out of code is different from it's structurally unsound. So, because you could build a school tomorrow and within a couple of days, it's going to be out of code. They change all the time. And there is not necessarily, you don't have to bring up to code unless you're doing something else. So I, I know it's been about a month since I read the report. Did they say it was out of code or did they say it was structurally unsound? It does not meet today's code. That's all they said, that it didn't meet today's code. And, and if we have uh, snow weight greater than Again, they did the math 16 inches. We'd be exceeding code. We'd be exceeding code. Oh, I'm sorry, we'd be exceeding right. the uh, uh, Jewish that we currently have in there. Right. So, what, well, two Decembers ago when Windsor got 48 inches and we yeah. got 40 30 something? Yeah, like right. 42 inches. Yep. We had that still on that roof. It was the same roof. Yep. So, and when I read about the cracks in the bricks yes i i didn't see them tying those cracks to snow load i i read something about 
the fan vibrating and then not having lemon toll, which I'm not, I don't know anything about masonry. So yeah. Like, so were they making a connection between weight on the roof and the cracks or were they saying the cracks are caused by other things? So they're not sure. And that was our biggest concern. Were those cracks caused by weight or were they caused by something else? They seem to think maybe the fan might've been vibrating. I doubt that very much because we have them on the other side as well but they also indicated that could be because of the lintel in other words there's a uh, a metal over doorways and big expanses they run a sheet of metal thin quarter inch that hold mm. that weight um we could have gotten water infiltration in there and that caused the cracks so what they've asked us to do we're in the process of doing this now is to repoint those cracks and then observe them and see if they come back if they do not come back, it's most likely due to, again, settling or over the years, these things happen naturally, they just do, um, but they just asked us to monitor it. They did not want to say that they were directly attributed to snow weight. Okay, so in order to keep our meeting going, what I'll say is you're gonna have, your, your plan was to have them back to assess repointing and reinforcing yeah, get a price. So, so what I'll have them do is we, we're going to repoint those ourselves. Okay. I will uh, reach out to them and have them engineer and give us a proposal on what it would be to beef up those choices. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go. Everyone okay if I go to the next one? Yep. So um, our friends, JCI, are we able to control the heat in all of our buildings? Almost. I did sign them off on a substantial completion form for them. So we are 90 some odd percent through uh, having our control system up. It'll be very interesting this winter to see if we actually are able to control things as they have indicated, um, but they are desperately trying to make this happen here as soon as possible. So we are- And can't we use? I mean, I can physically go on yeah, and, and look at things and manipulate them. Does it actually work? I won't know until we get the heat rolling. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, but I, are you happy with the way they you know, are finishing up, or is it still really contentious? No, we uh, we we got some we got some people on board that are actually doing something now. I think okay. we put the fear of God into them. Uh, literally, we we're gonna walk and then we. We're going to drag it through the mud here. So they uh, have a bunch of people on it and they've been very attentive to us to the point where we are at a point now where, again, I signed off on substantial completion, which means now they're going to start their measurement and uh, values uh, to be sure that we actually are saving energy and um, we'll be moving forward. Yep. And weren't they proposing giving us some money back because cost savings didn't happen? Correct. We're in the process. We haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. We're going to be talking about there's going to be some horse trading involved here towards the end. They uh, have some things that uh, supposedly wasn't included in the scope of work, which I thought should be. And they did some extra things that went above and beyond their scope. So um, that, along with these smaller things, we're going to be mashing out. Anything else we need to know about JCI's contract at this point? No, for a moment, we're, we're moving forward. And then you, you deleted my bullet that was before this. It might have been in, inadvertent, but there's still some boiler repair. Is that? Yeah, no, that was all taken care of. That's done. Yeah, so right now, I actually have one more repair on the boiler that's about $6,000, but that was just due to wire and tear. It had nothing to do with anybody doing anything. Um, that'll be repaired here uh, first week of October. Um, not our, our boilers will be up and running. All right. Um, all right. Going on, moving on to Killington Elementary School. Yeah. So there was a, we had some issues with uh, our projects, capital improvement projects for the summer of 2025. Um, I guess I'll just start at Killington. I have that uh, spreadsheet that I gave you folks. And I'm going to go through what we completed and what we didn't complete. We had some issues uh, this summer with, uh, again, supply chains and having people, not enough manpower. But anyways, at Killington Elementary, we were able to, to paint the building. We did all the trim work. We took care of that. 
um, the insulation on the interior hallway, they were unable to complete that project. They didn't have enough time to get in there. They were just totally booked this summer. It looks like it's going to happen during April break. Um, I did sign that contract and they will be doing it during April break. As long as we have enough time for that uh, stuff to gas off, um, we should be all set. Fire alarm repair, we had some issues there. That wasn't completed this summer. Um, we didn't get enough of the parts to come in. So that's going to have to be rolled over. They are going to be trying to piecemeal that together over the breaks here. And hopefully by next summer, we'll have that uh, replaced the entire alarm system. There was an upgrade there. Um, I'll shift gears to Woodstock Elementary School. Um, the treehouse repair, we uh, got into that and we got about half of it completed because the more we took apart, the more rot we found. Um, so they had about a week there and they uh, did as much as they could in a week. I was under budget, so I'm going to roll that money over till next summer and we're going to complete the second phase of that treehouse repair. But we did get a majority of the stuff that needed to be done done. We replaced a lot of wood. Um, because that place was made with um, just natural wood, um, it, it tended to rot out fairly quickly just because it's at the bottom of the hill. We get a lot of rain there. Um, but we did make it structurally sound enough for kids to play on it. Uh, my playground drainage project there, is tentatively scheduled for this week to happen. I was over there today and I didn't see anybody there. I'll be making a phone call tomorrow to see if that'll happen. We did complete the flooring. We uh, uh, put new carpeting in three classrooms there over the summer. Uh, the platform lift that was uh, did not get done. That was a total nightmare. The uh, state of Vermont and the, the fire marshal uh, didn't want to play nice with us. They did not approve us replacing the lift in kind with another lift. Uh, they said that it would not meet egress. So uh, they shot that down and then uh, they're pushing us to get a, I guess lack of a better term, an elevator installed, an open elevator. We found a spot in a rear stairwell at West, but we would need another variance from the Department of uh, basically the Fire Marshal Department uh, to come in and give us a variance on that because we are two inches too small for the platform. Um, right now, they don't like me and I don't like them, but we're hoping to work our way through this and I can get uh, a variance so we can put in uh, an actual lift in there. An um, elevator? Or? Uh, well, it's called a lift, but it is an elevator. It's a one piston. And it will be an elevator being that rear stairway, not totally enclosed, wrapped around the elevator, but a, lift, a vertical lift coming up rather than the horizontal type of lift that we have. Um, so the bad news with that is it's going to be more money. Um, we're probably looking at 80 to 100,000 rather than the 60 to 70 that we had budgeted. Currently, the platform lift that is there is still functioning, it's inspected. By the fire department, so we're still good there, but it's just a matter of time before that it's gonna give up the ghost. Uh, classroom walls at West Duke, we uh, enclosed two other classrooms that originally were open concept designs. Uh, Maggie asked that they be uh, enclosed, so we enclosed two of those. We added some walls and uh, we painted the uh, exterior trim on that building, a majority of it, if not. Uh, most of it, I would say, besides the brick. Uh, I'll shift gears. We'll go to Reading Elementary. Uh, we completed the parking lot replacement down there. Now Reading has a nice paved parking lot completely around the building. Um, we uh, re made some repairs on the sheds there. Uh, I'll be moving those sheds. They're currently off the parking lot. We'll be moving them back onto the parking lot hopefully this week at some time. Uh, the HVAC upgrades, we did a complete upgrade to the whole HVAC system there. Uh, Reading Elementary is now in the 21st century with heating and cooling. We got heat pumps there. Um, it's uh, the final push there. They should be out, or they were out on Friday. 
my guys are going to run down there. I pull some guys out of the high school to help clean that building so that it'll be ready for um, in-service day on Thursday and Friday of this week. There's some final small things like some controls that need to be worked out, uh, but it won't interfere with kids while they're in the classroom there. So uh, Freddie went well this summer. Uh, Barnard Academy, I have a shed being delivered there uh, at uh, some point this week. We'll need to assemble that. That's going to unfortunately happen during uh, while school is there, but no, no, no issues there at all. It's just putting it together. I'll pull my guys over to take care of that. That was the only thing really that happened at Barnard Academy. Uh, Prosper Valley, we did repair the rear parking lot. Um, and we didn't order any bottle fillers again, only because I, I've been asked to kind of pump the brakes there a little bit. Wasn't quite sure, but I can get that done here now that I know I have a little bit of money freed up. That's not a problem. Um, here at the SU building, we did uh, paint the exterior wood and trim on this building. Uh, I did purchase a pickup truck. They are now the proud owners of the 2024 Ford F-350, which I got for $47,000. Um, I hope to have a plow and a sander here over the next few weeks. Um, I just got some pricing back today on those and we'll be picking a vendor to um, install those. And our door access system uh, again, that was something that uh, got kicked down the road a little bit back. Uh, I was hoping to do that here this summer. It never came to fruition. Our folks who from Verkata uh, dropped the ball there. Installer never came through for us. So I'm trying to find someone else who might be able to install that door access system for us. The issue with that is I only have about six weeks to make that happen because we're using ESSER funding for that and we need to spend that money before October. So we'll, we'll have that done. Um, all right, let's go to any questions. I, I'll start with one. So the fire alarm repair at Killington, parts didn't arrive, it didn't happen, but we also have that like as the highest priority. So we did, yeah. Like, what, what is the state of the situation? Like, if there's a fire, what happens? You everything, know? everything works. The only thing, we were cited uh, for having um, our heat detectors uh, were dated. They still function, they still work, but they were out of code, they were still dated. So the fire marshal um, suggested that we change out those, there was, I think, eight of them. Um, it didn't warrant replacing just those eight. I was due to replace that entire system. So that's what we went for. We went to replace the entire system because it was, it was time. Uh, the fire marshal should not give us um, any issue with it because I have a signed contract indicating that we are moving towards replacing everything. So no harm will follow. Everything is still working there. It's still functioning. Uh, shouldn't be a problem if they do show it back up. I have a signed contract saying that we're in the process of making this happen. Um, I guess. It's not here, but at some point, maybe it'd be good to know, like, with all the completed projects, like, where are we, and then some that were deferred, where are we coming out compared to the budget that you were allocated? And that, that kind of gets actually to the next agenda item, so maybe we can just hold off on that, but others have questions about the actual physical work over the summer? Yeah, I have just one. Did, did you get an agreement from Maggie that the walls that we put in are going to stay for at least two years? I did. I made that perfectly clear that those walls will not come down, not as long as I'm here. Okay, and excellent. That, Great job, Joe. I'm proof, uh, they should do very well in there. Um, there shouldn't be any issues. And I will have an actual... Uh, a budget number for you folks of what we spent and what is kind of left over. Some of this money will run over Jim indicated that I could roll some of this money over specifically like, you know, the completing the uh, tree house and the alarm system. Um, all that money would roll over Jim so there shouldn't be an issue with any of that. I, I was going to ask that question. So when we don't spend money that is in our budget, 
we, we can make a request to roll it over and not have it impact next year's budget? I, I sure hope so. Again, I'll get more clarity from Jim, but I asked and, and uh, he indicated to me it shouldn't be a problem. So I'll get clarity on, on how that actually works. Oh, all right. So I guess that would bring us up to agenda item number six, which I think to me is like the elephant in the room because I'm, I'm, you know, I've heard from Jim that in order to not go over the excess spending cap, we have to take 2.4 million out of our budget next year. If he just rolled forward to 2025 to 2026 with all the contractual increases that are there. Now, I also heard today that he might be able to get the repayments of our loans taken out of that. Correct. Um, yeah. Which would make, which would still leave us in a big hole, like 1.4 million. So my, my, a question for you is, has finance, has uh, administration come to you and said, take your budget for 26 and make it X instead of Y? They have not. What they have asked me to do is cut about 150 to 200. Okay, so they have. Yeah. yeah so there is an ask to reduce the budget. Correct. And, and so, and we don't have to do it tonight, but I think this committee would like, like to know, like what, important projects did you want to do in 20 under the fiscal year 26 budget and again like which ones have to be done and which ones that can be cut or deferred yeah so i i mean just briefly in a nutshell a majority of our schools are in pretty good shape and i'm sp i'm speaking specifically more towards the elementary schools um we've been doing a lot of work over the past few years to get those places into a, a good spot and I think we're almost there. So I don't see any huge capital expenditures going out there, but again, like I said, the elevator is a hundred thousand dollars right there. I do think we need to sit on some money for the high school, because I can assure you there's going to be a catastrophic failure at some point and um, we're going to need some funds to address that. It's just a, a fact of life for us now. I mean, our, our units are pretty much tied, even if we wanted to move forward on any kind of capital improvements. I, I think we're going to be in a bad way, specifically if we have to borrow money for it now that the, it's going to be considered towards our pupil spending. So, I mean, that really puts a kibosh on, on any large projects that we have come down the pike. So I know that that was an agenda item before we tried to get it into the finance committee and Jim was going to answer a question about whether we can create reserves. Um, I, I guess before we go into that discussion, I mean, isn't there some degree of just good old fashioned budgeting where you can say like, these are the projects that will need to be done at the yeah. high school in, in, tw in the 2026? <laughs> the, the problem is they really don't. It's, Putting good money after bad, and if I had to say, okay, here's our, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even pinpoint one thing saying that yes, this is something that we would need to be addressed because it's it's basically major systems like you know the, the plumbing and the electric things like that where there's really not much I can do to preempt or or, or put a band aid on. It's just okay. So that makes total sense to me. Certain big systems could fail and it's hard to like tackle like replacing the whole electric system sure um but, but what about just like i guess some of the like interior spaces i mean you have paint work you have to do you, yeah. have, you have to change any windows you have to change any tiles or flooring i mean it seems like so that some of that stuff has not happened because we thought we we're getting a new building yeah i mean right now the state of Vermont passed a law that we can't go issue a school bond. Correct. And if we do, it has to go against that excess spending cap, which means our, our taxpayers have to pay twice. So it's just like right now we have a moratorium on so the, building a new building, as I understand the law. And no, it's true. So anything that we borrow has to go towards our pupil spending. So if we needed to put a new roof, let's say, on the high school, which is going to be close to $2 million. Um, we'd have to borrow for that, and it's going to cost us four million because we're paying food every when we if 
we pass that threshold of where people spending ought to pay too. I think I think Vermont is, or at least my thoughts are, the A or we are trying to make folks die on the vine. I think it's their opportunity to start shutting down schools without having to be the bad guy. You know, I I, I really don't understand why they're doing this. Um, I mean, how could you stop schools from repairing? Their infrastructure. I just don't get it. it. Just doesn't make sense. So, is it legal for us to have a rainy day fund or sinking fund or whatever you're going to call it? No, according to Jim, I don't remember if I got an answer on that. I, I think I don't think we can now. Okay. I think it might all go towards, depending on how the laws it might go towards us. Well, any yeah, if we took uh, money from the taxpayers into our budget. That would increase our budget and that would increase the amount over excess spending cap and that would get double taxed. Yeah. But that that's different from the question of are you even allowed to just take money from taxpayers during one year, set it aside, and use it as a rainy day fund. I, I don't remember if Jim gave us that answer. I'll try to get clarity on, on, on that. And I thought Jim had said we couldn't do it, but I'm not 100 percent Let me uh He's gone this week, but I'll speak to him first thing next week. So I guess I'm just asking, like, do we need to start viewing the middle school, high school more like we're viewing all the other elementary schools with, like, here's the list of things we need to do. We need to prioritize and we need to put the ones that we can do in the budget and get them done if it can fit in the budget. Knowing that some of those repairs, like ripping out your sewer system pipes, isn't going to happen because they're under the, pay, the cement and you're not going to change your whole electric. No, so I think it's more like um, just what you had indicated. The, the, what we're doing at the other schools, uh, carpeting. I'll give you a brief example. Um, so I was going to do one room. We have uh, we have a lot of rooms in there with some pretty shabby carpeting, but um, we had pricing of about six grand to to recarpet a room, and of course it was a remnant like this. We peeled it back. Lo and behold, there's asbestos underneath there. So. Now it's remediation and the $6,000 carpet job is now an $11,000 carpet job, if not more. Um, I had to pump the brakes on that. And hopefully we'll make it happen here uh, over one of the breaks. Again, I'm thinking February or April break um, because I have to have uh, meat air coming and pull out all the asbestos. So. And so, like some of the main issues that our high school, middle school that was having that justified the whole new build, um, the heating system, but now we kind of are prop that back up. Um, air handling, like air that doesn't move, I guess we really haven't changed that. Yeah, I mean, we have we have better airflow than we've ever had in that building. Not today. Yeah, we do. I, I know, like I know, light, like kids sometimes struggle with lighting, and they struggle with acoustics. Certain classrooms, like four people talk at once, and it just gets so loud. It's yeah, ridiculous. again, there's not much I can do for sound dampening. You look at those uh, two cafeterias, or any any of those rooms, even the music room. Um, there's not too much we can do. the The sound dampening materials that I can put on the wall are fairly expensive because they need to be fireproof. Um, and I, to be honest with you, I've never seen them really work well. Um, you'd need dampening on the ceiling and or full of walls to make it actually like work, work, work. Um, it just wouldn't be cost effective. I mean, I could see it doing in certain rooms, maybe, you know, like the band room or something, where these folks really need it. Um, okay. But it'd be, it'd, it'd be difficult to, to do it in the cafeterias. They get soiled and wet. And, and I have been getting so uh, I, I neglected to, or I did mention, I don't know, at some point. So I had a, a bunch of um, inspectors show up one day here. Uh, the uh, electrical, plumbing, and heating inspectors came from the state, they did a walk through here, and they cited us for a bunch of stuff. But one of the things that they did cite us on was um, household electronics in um, a lot of the classrooms lamps, uh, Christmas lights, uh, microwaves, things like that. So what we've been doing is we offered 
to go around to all the classrooms because the uh, union and teachers kind of pushed back because they wanted to, uh, you know, better better lighting or lighting that was more suiting towards learning or whatever. So our our offer was to go around and unscrew light bulbs or every other one to kind of drop that light, and they're really pushing the fact to get in again other lamps. But our insurance frowns upon it. They need to be commercial. They need to be UL rated. What what are our lights in most of the rooms in the high school? They are well, we put in LED. Correct. There's LED throughout. So what's the complaint from? They want it to look like their living room. Yeah. So did the LEDs we put in, were they like too much of a white light or blue light, or they, were they not like a soft enough light? Um, I don't know. It's different. Some people love bright lights and, and want them in their rooms, and other teachers don't. So I've offered, again, to, I can adjust it by removing lights and dropping the light for them, you know, and giving them whatever they want. Um, but they're in, intent upon bringing in Christmas lights and lamps and things like that, which uh, again, our insurance company frowns on it. And I just I got an email from the uh, union asking for written regulations or the regulations that they were not following. Um, Fire Marshal, I reached out to him and asked for him for something in writing. He wasn't able to provide that. He just pretty much has ignored me. I think it's because we've been putting hits lately with all the other things we've been doing. But I did forward the union um, our insurance mm -hmm. did audit our they did audits on the building. So I forwarded them what our insurance company actually took pictures and said lamps can't be here, this type of stuff. So hopefully that will so the teachers have to get rid of their lava lamp candles to hit stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And all the Christmas lights and everything, but they are fighting tooth and nail. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, the, the high school, I mean, it's, it's the, the list is long there. Do we really want to start putting uh, new tile and carpeting? It just seems like good money after bad. Is there any way to be like circuitous to where we say, okay, we're going to budget a certain amount? to put in tile, oh, we didn't wind up spending that, so we're gonna roll that over to next year, do it that way, not call it rainy day fund, but assign it to projects that don't happen. Yeah, I'll reach out to Jim and find out, but I did ask at one point, I don't recall what he said about us actually rolling that money over and, and yeah, cause it, quote unquote, rainy day fund, or will it go towards college? Typically when you have unspent money it goes back in the big pocket you know the big pool it doesn't of the state or no no how about this yeah it goes back into like if there's left over any other budget money just gets rolled into one heap sum you'll see that in the audit mm -hmm. it doesn't go back to individual accounts that it was assigned to unless he decides to set up a capital like it's tricky but then we have that surplus in next year's budget right okay yep. um so we're almost done, but do we have any RFPs outstanding? We Currently, at? no, we do not. Um, all the bigger projects were done. Um, all the RFPs that I needed were already submitted. Um, and I really don't have larger things on the horizon. We did have uh, HVAC projects uh, for Woodstock Elementary and Killing Temple. We were forced to put them on the back burner now because Esther is running out and uh, we don't have the ability to borrow money anymore. Yeah. And, right, so I knew we hadn't launched those, but we don't, our team doesn't have to look at any proposals no. or approve any RFPs. So I didn't add this to the agenda at the beginning, but I it, I just remembered um, the news this summer that we most of us probably saw, maybe not, that the PCB test at Hartford had mm -hmm. like, come back mm -hmm. with like positive findings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I read that that headline was like, oh God, are they closing their school? Like, so like, do we have any intel on what they're doing and how they're handling it? There, it's in the tech center and they're relocating classrooms. The culinary arts is going to the um, Elks Club, something like that. And the other two classrooms that had to be moved, 
those uh, programs are being relocated within the building. So there are three sections of the tech center that were closed down, you know, and they've all relocated those three programs, either externally or internally. And will they try to um, remediate or, or are they just not going to use the facility? They did try to remediate and it didn't make a difference. Yeah. They didn't change that. And, yeah, and, and we're scheduled for 2025. Yeah. What, what was the source of those PCBs? I'm not sure. We just received a memo that those programs were moved. It could have been anything, Bob, from caulking to, to paint. Um, but we're, we're scheduled to be tested in 2025. I can assure you that we're going to hit at the high school. Um, the money that the state had budgeted for remediation is already gone. So there's, there's nothing for us um, if we were to hit. And what they're doing and what's the frustration is they're testing at summertime when there's no one moving in the buildings when the humidity is the highest like we talked to jill briggs campbell and bob donahue when they were down here um walking the building and it's incredibly frustrating because until we get the windows open and people are moving through the humidity levels go down but then they test and then it takes weeks before you get the test results in the meanwhile school moves forward so it's it's really challenging in what country is in things? What does humidity level have to do with plastic? So it, it's just the vapors that they give off, just they'll settle rather than being okay. dissipated quicker if the air is moving. It. It's drier. Yeah, it, it, <clears throat> of the 300 and some odd schools in Vermont, like 200 are going to hit. A lot of them were built back in the 50s and 60s. That's still there. Florida will find it in the soil. It's out there. Uh, there's no plan B unless they come up with funding for remediation. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. So, do you know, so we have, we're, we're signed into that case. I think when I looked at this a while ago, we as a state have a higher threshold than mm -hmm. any other. Mm -hmm. State changed it you know, when they first came out. It was so Vermont's notorious for having lower thresholds. So if 200 schools have to be closed down and our kids all have to mm -hmm. leave and go home, like wouldn't the state maybe think about reevaluating that threshold? We've, I, we've Raph and I have testified multiple times to that effect. Presented the data, you know, showing what Massachusetts has done, but the head of the Senate Ed Committee is so entrenched in terms of this policy. There's been no budget, and there was legislation to change it last session and they did not change it even though there's no money to fund it yeah. so we can't fix our aging schools we can't remediate our aging schools i'm not quite sure what they want us to do homeschool oh so like trailers the weeds you know oh yeah because FEMA trailers, and that's what's going to Well, one solution would be to, to encourage forcefully our representatives to change the most recent law, grandfathering those who already have new school plans in the works, and then immediately take another vote and pass the new build. That'd be one solution. Because there's no solution going down the road we're going, that's for sure. Well, I, I, I just saw that the board okayed the double digit increase for insurance. But not for not for schools. That is no. not was not the insurance program of our schools. Awesome. That's the other providers, right? It? Okay. okay. I saw yeah. twenty percent paper today. No, that's not us. It will still be an increase, but it won't be to the twenty-one to twenty-four percent. So I guess we can wrap up. Okay. I mean, it sounds like you got a lot done this summer, despite some projects having to be put off. And the buildings are beautiful. They work super hard. That's my public comment. Just wanted to say <laughs> the team did an amazing job. They were super hard. The buildings look great. They've done a nice work. And we got AC and Reading, so now yeah. as you rent that space out, you make some money. 
It's got AC. Now you're talking. I'm serious. I think that uh, we could be hosting some conferences there in the summertime. I see no reason not to. Our library is pretty small, but I might take care of the kitchen. Jim, you got a little kitchen there? We got a gym. Yeah. Maybe that's a strategy we should aggressively pursue before PCB testing. <laughs> Can we rent these buildings out, get some airflow, get people moving so that we pass the test? Barnard yeah. are used pretty much during the summer. Prosper Valley is used schools. Yeah. Well, school. you got to make sure you guys have the capacity to do the projects you need to do in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. Uh, I, I mean, really, the high school is used for a majority of the summer with summer. So, Woodstock Elementary, small corner of it's used. Uh, Prosper Valley, you didn't have much going on during the summer. Um, rec departments, a bit of killing. It. So, yeah, folks are in the New me, new us. If there's a way we don't need a prosper valley unoccupied anymore, right? Like, Correct. That doesn't happen. Um, I guess I'm bouncing back a little bit to one item. That sure. The, the platform lift that the fire marshals wouldn't allow us to, right. to, re, to rebuild it. Yes. Yeah. So now we're back to getting a variance and maybe an element. So the question I have is like, what? Uh, Classrooms are on the third floor that will be inaccessible to like the so there's ARP is up there. I think I don't know what else is up there. Music, mm -hmm. art and music. And then there's another space which they they used have to have read. Room, and I think it's more the SEL room, I mean, just just my wife's room, I think, is up there, third floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, then across the hall was a uh, art. Uh, art. Yeah. And, then and then music band at the end. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. we don't have like so. And how many students need that lift? Currently, we only have one student. I don't know if she's coming back or not. So, um, but that that platform lift is still inspected, still functioning, but we're at some point, at some point we're going to have to replace it. It does actually. Function. It does, so but would, I can't would, guarantee it's not going to stop one day halfway up. So we would put a kit. We would actually use it to put someone. Up. Yes, it's just not passing. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. It's gonna. It's done this before. It stopped halfway. Um, they, they again. My assumption is they let me replace it in kind with something that already exists there that did not work out. Um, I actually had words with the fire marshal, and. It uh, looks like we have to pursue the horizontal lift. I'm sorry, the vertical lift, which is kind of like a, an elevator, for lack of better terminology. And I'm going to need a variance for that because we're two inches too short for the platform. So I have to go to the state's governing board of um, elevators, elevator diplomacy, or something. <laughs> anyway, wish me luck. Right now, they don't like me. So you just need to work on your elevator pitch. Oh. <laughs> so uh, what I am going to do is move forward on that. I'm going to fill out the application of variance. And it's just if we get a kid over the broken leg, or yeah, I mean, not just yeah. it's not just wheelchair. It's just but I mean, we went from sixty thousand up to a hundred thousand. Yeah. All because somebody had a bad day and said no. Um, all right, so any committee members have any more questions before we adjourn and we give us like five, six minutes before the next meeting starts? Okay. All right, then we'll adjourn. Thanks for the earlier time, everyone. Yeah, Bob, and uh, just be sure to look over your shoulder when you're walking in the dark parking lots, okay? Will do, sir. I'll find you a janitor. Thank you. Everybody, I'm going to call this.